Hello, everyone. This is a 6502 assembly language introduction by Tokyo EdTech. That is me. And you see here it says I am live coding because I haven't really planned this out too well. I've got some things prepared, but I don't quite know what I'm doing. And I'm just doing a lot of it from memory and some review I've done recently. So, uh, yeah, it might be a little messy, but hopefully it'll be fun and uh, informative. So, real quick, uh, just a shout out to my... Oops. Wrong one. Shout out to my members here, my Snake members and my Invader members who are paid supporters of the channel. Uh, they make it possible for me to spend more time on the channel. So if you can join, uh, click the uh, join button down below. Much would much appreciate that. So 6502 assembly. Uh, first, what is assembly language? Assembly language is a very low level uh, representation of machine code. Machine code is the actual like binary numerical code that runs a computer's CPU. I don't know if that's a good definition, but it's hopefully understandable. And there are, of course, many varieties of CPUs, many varieties of computer, uh, the hearts of the computers. So 6502 was an early microprocessor. It was launched, you see here, in 1975. And uh, it basically launched the like cheap computer evol you know, revolution, we'll say. Um, so you can see here a list of computers like the Atari 2600, um, Apple II, the NES, and the Commodore 64 were probably the most popular machines that used this processor. And uh, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how it works and, and try to give you an idea of what, uh, yeah, basically how your computer works. So the way I'm gonna be doing this is by using something called Easy 6502. And it was made by this person, uh, Skilled Rick, Skilled Rick, uh, on GitHub. And I guess his name is Nick Morgan. And this is a page, and this has a, actually a lot more information uh, about what I'm going to be doing. Uh, it's, it's more advanced. It knows more than I do. So I'm going to keep it a little bit simpler, I hope. And what you need to do is to go to this person's GitHub page. And you'll see this page here, 6502JS. And what uh, Nick has done is created a JavaScript version of a 6502 processor and given it a little screen and a way to do input. So it's pretty cool. So all you gotta do is go to code and click download zip, and then you'll download the zip file. Now I've already done this. And then you just open it and then, let's see, let me sure what that means. Uh, you know, however your computer works, open it, unpack it, and on my computer, I have it here. I've already opened it up onto my desktop. I'll show you what that looks like real quick. Um, so in the desktop, I've got that folder 6502JS master. And you'll see a file in there. It says index.html. Double click that and it will open in your browser. Now I'm using Chromium. I, I, had, it, I think it works better with Chromium, but it does work on Firefox as well. And what it does is it gives you this page. And so we're going to be typing our code here. Uh, we can run it, reset it, and do some different things. There's a little bit of a display here, and there's some very cryptic numbers and, and things over here. I'll try to explain some of that. And there's a little bit of output down here as well. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is what we're gonna be using to actually do the coding. Now just uh, real quick, um, 6502 assembly language uses, I think it said over here, there are 56 instructions. And I think there's some variants that have one or you know a few extra instructions and things like that. Uh, but for now, we're just going to stick to some of these. Now, of course, we're not going to go over all of these. Uh, I don't know what they all do, to be honest. Uh, I know what some of them do, but not all of them. And I'll just show you a little bit about how, like I said, how this stuff works. And uh, yeah, it's pretty fascinating stuff. Now, one thing you may or may not know, um, a lot of the examples that you'll see down here, you can see how they have a dollar sign before the number. Uh, that is hexadecimal. That is base 16. So you can see here, you know, hex, um, the dollar sign tells you this is a hexadecimal number. So it's probably a little bit confusing to most people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the hex over to decimal uh, for people that aren't familiar with hex. And it, it makes things a little bit easier, I, I think, as well. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, so real quick, you'll see over here, You've got A, we've got X, and we've got Y. I'm gonna restart, reload that because I, I had played around with it earlier. So you see A, X, Y, you see S, P, uh, P, C, and then you see these you know, kind of uh, <laughs> cryptic uh, letters here. And I'm not gonna talk about all of it, but the, the parts I'm gonna talk about are really important. So you got A, which is called the accumulator. 
uh, X and Y. So these are what's called registers. And the accumulator is very, very important. Um, that's where you do a lot of your mathematical operations. And X is like kind of an auxiliary helper register and Y is another register. Now modern CPUs have way more registers. And these are very fast memory locations that exist essentially inside the CPU. And what assembly language lets us do, and this is, again, this is how your computer actually operates, is that we can basically get values out of memory, put values into memory, we can add them, we can, I think we even subtract them, um, and that's about it. That's really all we do. We can compare numbers and we can jump to different areas of code. That's really all your computer does. It just does it really, really fast. Um, so let me go ahead and show you basically what I'm talking about. So as I said earlier, there's three registers, A, X, and Y. So A is our main register, it's called the accumulator. So if I want to load, if I want to put a number into A, so if you're thinking like, you know, like, you know, like for example, like A equals one, okay? So I like to think of it that way, at least for beginners, X equals one, Y equals one, for example. How we do that is we do a command called LDA, and I want the number, number sign is really important, and I'm just gonna put one there. Okay. And I could say LDX number two, LDY number three. Okay. So then to run this program, I'm gonna hit assemble. Can you see here indexing labels, found zero labels, assembling code, code assembled successfully, six bytes. That's really important. The 6502 is an eight bit processor. Okay, so you see here the data width is eight bits, which means that it can store values in one memory location from zero to 255, or it can process it at least. And it can address uh, 16 bits, which gives us 65,536 memory locations. Trust me on that one. Um, so what I've done over here, where did I put it? Yeah, is I've basically loaded, well, actually I haven't run it yet. I've assembled it. And if I go to hex dump, you can see here, again, everything's in hexadecimal. So A9 is LDA. Oops, want that back. Um, 0, 01, of course, is 1. A2 is LDX. 0, 02 is the number 2. A0 is LDY. And the value is 0, 03. So that's the actual numbers that is stored in memory. So if I run this, okay, you'll see over here now the, the uh, accumulator is 0, 01. X is two and Y is three. Okay. So we can load, so it's load values into any one of those uh, registers using these three commands. Now, um, I, as I mentioned earlier, it's an eight bit computer. So we can only store values up to 255. Oops, 255. So let's go ahead and assemble that. I'm gonna run it. And you can see over here, FF, FF, FF. So if I go to hexadecimal to decimal, so FF is 255. So that is why you'll see these numbers over here. Now let's see what happens if I do 256. I'm kind of curious. Okay, so we got a syntax error. 256 is too big. Okay, so I cannot, I can't use 256 because I can't store that much information. Oops, that is not what I want to happen. Um, let's get that back to where it was. Okay, so that is how we put values into one of the registers. Now, a couple other things we can do is we can take those values. I'm actually gonna put, I'm gonna go back to one, uh, two, three. And again, I don't have quite all this memorized, but I'm gonna do my best. Um, so if you click here where it says notes, uh, this is a little bit of information about this particular system. Now. If this was a Commodore 64 or a VIC-20 or an Atari or something, memory, different memory locations control different things. So in this particular program, uh, the creator, Nick, has created a little display for us, which, which is very nice. And by changing a certain memory location value, we can put colors on the screen. And this is, again, this is how your computer works. It's far more complex now, but um, this is the gist of it. 
So you see here where it says memory locations, dollars two hundred to dollars five ff ff mapped to screen pixels. Again, here are the color codes: zero is black, one is white, all the way down to f, which is light gray. Now, nine is nine, a is ten, b is eleven, c is twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Okay. So we've got black white and red. Okay, now we won't be able to see black because the background's black. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this to, oh, zero is black. Okay, so one's white, two is red, and one is cyan. We'll, we'll go with that. Now, as it says down here, 200 to 5FF map to the screen. So this is 200, and this is gonna be 5FF. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna store some of these values into these pixels. So I'm gonna try I think it's store accumulator. Now watch what I do here. I, well, I need to convert that. So it was 200 in hex. Convert, that's 512. Okay, so, oops. so I'm gonna store A in 512. Notice I did not put a number here. I'm gonna store X, I think I can do this, in 513, and I'm gonna store Y in 514. So I'm gonna assemble it and see what happens. Okay. Code assembled successfully, it took up 15 bytes. And again, if we look at the hex dump, it looks like this. Again, because everything's in hex, it's a little bit complicated. Um, well, even if it wasn't in hex, it's probably a little complicated. I'm gonna go ahead and run it. And there we go. So we've got white. Okay, now the notes open again. So remember one was white. So I loaded number one into the accumulator. I stored it at 512 in the computer's memory. Now, in this particular simulated system, 512 represents this little dot right here, this little pixel right here. Pretty cool. Okay, so again, I did the same thing with store X, and I did the same thing with store Y. Okay, so now, notice I'm not limited to 255 here. Memory addresses are 16 bits. So as I mentioned earlier, that gives you 65,535, or 536 memory locations, zero to 65,535. So you can see how using this, we could start to draw some sort of shape. Okay. Now, let's see if we can change some colors here, um, or change the, the background here. So notice how it's 200 to 5FF. Okay, so, Let's see, what is 300 from hex to decimal, 300, 768. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to here. I'm gonna do 768, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do, and again, I know these numbers because I played around with this earlier. Okay, so there's, there's no real secret here. I just spent some time working on this. Um, STA, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put STA into What's next? 500. Convert. 1280. All right. Okay, so 1280. Let's go ahead and assemble it. Okay, no errors. I'm going to run it. Okay, so you can see how this first block starts here and it's going to end like at this last little pixel here. And then here and here, here and here, here and here. Now, because we can only do two, you know, I'm going to put it. Um, so this is zero to 255, so it's 256 bytes of space in the memory. And again, this is what this particular system does. Okay, so I'm gonna keep those numbers, and let me think about this for a second. Okay, so watch what I do here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna just go ahead and get rid of this stuff now, and because this is the start of memory. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make a label. And I'm gonna call my label just start. So this is the start of the program. And I'm gonna go ahead and LDA. And I don't think it has to be capitalized, but it traditionally is. Number zero one, or one, because that's white. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say JMP start. I'm gonna hit assemble. Okay, and we're just gonna hit run. Now, it doesn't look like it's doing much, but you can see over here, 
what's called the program counter is kind of going crazy. So the program counter tells you where in the execution you are in your program. Now, if you remember this hex dump, okay, you see here, the memory for the program starts at 0, 0600, which is 1536. Okay, so at 600, it starts here and the command is LDA. And then the next, it's going to load one into the accumulator. Then it's going to store what's in the accumulator in 0 to 100. This is backwards. Uh, I'm not sure if this is little Indian or big Indian, but it's something the way just memory is stored, the order that the bytes are stored in memory. And I forget which one's which. And then it jumps to 600 back to the start. I know that's probably a little complicated. But that's basically how it works. But because the accumulator never changes, um, it's just always going to store the same thing. So what I want to try here is, how can I do that? Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try x instead, ldx, store x. I'm going to assemble it and run it, make sure it does the same thing. OK, I'm going to stop that. And then there's a command called INX. And what INX does, and that should be over here somewhere, uh, if I can find it. Oh, there is an increment. Is there an increment? What does that do? Ah, no, it doesn't do what I think it does. Um, there is an INX, and INX should increment X. Okay, so that's what I want to happen here. So let's go ahead and try that. Assemble it. I'm going to run it. Okay. I'm going to stop that. OK, so because this is inside, basically it's kind of a loop. So I'm going to assemble it and run it. And now you can see how it's flashing different colors. Because what's happening is I start with 1 and the x. I store it in the memory location that you know relates to this bit on the screen. Then I increment x. So x becomes, you can see here how it's going really, really fast. So it's just adding one each time and storing it in that spot. Which is pretty cool. Uh, so I'm going to stop that. Now, there's this other thing that we can do. Uh, is I'm going to do it, I'm going to do LDY. Oops. And I'm going to do number zero, okay, comma, y. Okay, and I think this is going to work, okay? So what should happen, okay, is I'm going to load, I just make the zero, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be one, but I'll do that. So let's assemble and see if it works. It's syntax error. Okay, what did I do wrong? Um, OK, so probably there is no store x uh, or no uh, control y, S, uh, stx. Like I said, I don't know this super well. Ah, OK. Cancel. OK. Again, I know what the problem is. It's just it's just super hard to explain. <laughs> so, um, sorry, accumulator. OK, all right. Um, so it's just it's just the way 6502 assembly works. Uh, I can't do what I'm trying to do here, but I can do this. Uh, load the accumulator, store the accumulator. Oh, load x. So I, I'm changing a lot of, a lot around here. And x. And zero is black, so I'm going to put put that back to white. Sorry. Um, assemble. Okay. So what this does is I load 1 into the, the accumulator. I load 0 into x. And I've got my label, start, so that I can you know jump back to there. Then I'm going to store in 512 plus x. This is called, I think I can put a comment like this. This is called the offset. I think that's how you do comments. Let me assemble. Yeah. Um, so I'm offsetting 512 by whatever x is. And then what I'm doing is I'm incrementing x each time. So it's going to start here at 512 plus 0 is 512. 
increment x, x is 1, 512 plus 1 is 513. So if I run this, dude, something went very, very wrong. Um, is it this stuff? Let me get rid of that. Reset. Uh, okay, so it is blocked. So I'm going to copy this and refresh. He's not happy with me. And it does that sometimes. Assemble. Run. Okay, it is not working. Unknown opcode, 0607. Uh, Now, I know I did this earlier, <laughs> so I did practice this, I swear to God. Uh, comma X, comma Y. Yeah. All right, it should work. Uh, maybe there's no space there? And again, it's, it, keeps, it locks up sometimes if you do that. So I was, I was moving along pretty well there, but uh, I made a mistake somewhere. Assemble. That's really annoying. Um, let me just try this once and see if that's working, see if that's what I did wrong. Okay, so that's working. So it's the offset thing is not working. Um, come on, it should work. Don't know why that doesn't work. Assemble, it assembles, but doesn't run. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, I did this really. I did this earlier, and it was actually really cool. But uh, I don't know why it's not working now. Uh, reset. All right, let me go ahead and check. And this is why I said it was kind of live coding. Um, don't know what indirect means. Yeah, I actually don't know what that one means. Um, start X. Y. It's really weird. Okay. Probably something really obvious. Um, let me just try uh, to see if that makes a difference. Yeah, it does make a difference. Uh, lovely. Okay, so I think that's kind of a bug in the program because this doesn't work unless I use hexadecimal. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just switch everything over to hex. I apologize to people that don't read hex well, but I'll try and keep the numbers you know, pretty much, you know, low end. But 200 is 512, it's that spot there. Okay, so I'm gonna assemble it and run it. And you notice how it colored it in the background with all white. Now what I can do is I can also try things like, uh, actually this'll be kind of cool. I'm gonna stop that. If you remember in the notes, it says memory location FE, contains a new random byte on every instruction. So what I'm gonna do is in here, dollars FE. So what I'm doing, now this is, this is really important. You know, so, so far we've put numbers into, directly into the registers. We've stored those numbers into a space in memory that, that corresponds to a screen location. And then we have, yeah, it's always up. So then what we want to do here is we're going to load into the accumulator the contents of this memory location, which says a new random byte every instruction. Now, if I did number dollars FE, it would be FE all the time, which is... Uh, FE, which is 254. So there's a space in memory called, you know, has a number 254. And it's called the zero page. It's a little bit complicated. Anyway, uh, so, but in this case, I'm actually loading the value that's in there. And that value changes every instruction. So it's going to be random. So let's assemble that and run. Pretty, pretty cool. Now, as I said, you know, this, notice how you know once we increment to 255, it rolls over back to to back to zero. Okay. So if we wanted to do this with the whole screen, what we'd have to do is the following: 
stuff. Now, if you remember from the notes, 200 to 5 FF. So it's going to work out to 200, 300, oops, 400, and 500. And now if I assemble it and run it, oops, something went wrong. Oh, that should be 300. Assemble and run it. Now we get this kind of cool pixelated, I don't know if it's cool, but it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's pretty nifty. So you can see here, we're changing the accumulator value. We're changing the X value, or the X register, I shouldn't say the X value, but the X register. And you can see kind of how it's working because we're storing it, we're starting here, then we do here, then here, then here. Then we go to the next one here, 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 the next one here, 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 and here. Um, I'm gonna try a little experiment. Now, since there is a random number coming out of FE, I can do the same thing. So I'm gonna try LDX. I haven't tried this before. This is kind of an experiment for me as well. And I could do capital FE. That's usually the, the standard, but I could do FE. And so that will give us a random offset actually every time, which is kind of cool. Um, let me just put some spaces in here and make it easier to read. And I won't need INX anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble it and run. There we go. Now that's pretty cool. Um, so basically what I did, oops, yeah, stop doing that. Uh, assemble, run. So now I don't need these anymore because I'm using LDA and LDX here, but I, I can leave them in there. I'll, I guess take it out, hit stop and Hopefully that'll be on the screen long enough that you guys can copy that if you want to try this out. So, so I load the accumulator with the random number in FE. I load X with a different random number in FE. So again, it says every, every command it changes. So LDA, it gets a random number. LDX, it gets a random number. And I store that, some, so it's gonna be some random offset and some random color. Now, some of you are probably wondering like why, you know, the colors are only zero to uh, basically 15, zero to F. Uh, so, the, but this number could be like 200 or whatever. It just looks at that lower end of the, the bits for, for that value. That's why we're getting these, the same colors over and over again, which, which is what we want. So let's go ahead and run that. That is pretty darn cool. I, I am pretty happy with that. I hadn't done this one before. I'm actually going to copy that and I'll, I'll put that somewhere so we have it. Um, there's my good friend Jeannie. And now I should be able to save this as 6502demo.asm. I don't want that capitals. Uh, 6502demo.asm. And I'm going to try and save that, see what happens. Okay, and you can see how some of this is highlighted, but some of it is not. So I guess it doesn't really know uh, 6502 assembly very well, but uh, we can cut some slack. Anyway, uh, so that was kind of a good overview uh, of some of the things that we can do. And again, there's, there's 56 instructions, and I don't know what all of them do. I do want to try one other thing I haven't tried before, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's possible. Um, so just to review, we have LDA, LDX, and LDY, which allow us to either load in a number. So if we want to load in a particular number, we use the number sign or pound sign or hashtag, what you kids might call it. Um, if we want to load the contents of a memory location, we don't put the number. And then we can store the accumulator, we can store X, we can store Y in a particular memory location. Now with store accumulator, we can do this offset thing uh, to, any area of memory. Let's, I'll leave it at that. Um, and again, there was kind of a bug in this that if I was, if this was not a decimal, um, if it wasn't hexadecimal, I, it doesn't, the offset doesn't work. So that's something maybe we need to, we should uh, contact the developer about. But you know, thanks to the person that made this because this is amazing. And yeah, so basically that's it. So we did a little bit of offsetting, and then we have jump, which takes us back to the start of our loop. This is kind of like while true. Uh, it would just repeat forever and ever. Now what I want to try 
is if you notice here, memory location FF contains the ASCII code of the last key pressed. So I want to try and do a little bit of stuff with uh, keyboard commands. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go leave start. So I'm going to delete all this. So I'm going to keep that whole jump thing. And then what I want to do is I'm going to do LDA and it says FF, so dollars FF. And that's all I want to do for now. So I'm going to hit assemble. And I'm going to hit run. Now I'm going to hit the A key. Notice how it came up as dollars six one. I'm going to hit the D key, which is dollars six four. So if I go over to this ASCII table, which I prepared ahead of time, and I look for lowercase a, you can see the hex is 61 and the D is 64. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So what I want to do here is, uh, what do I want to do here? Okay. Okay, I'm going to try this. LD, I'm going to try LDX uh, number. And I'm just going to put it like right in the middle. Uh, let's see, what, what's a good one? Well, I'll just make it zero, it doesn't matter. LDX zero. Uh, so I've put the value zero into the X register. And what I'm doing is I want to figure out if I press the, the D key. We'll do D for now. So compare number dollars six four. Now watch what I do here. So I've loaded the accumulator with the value in that keyboard memory location. So when I press the keyboard, it changes the value in the memory location. I'm comparing it to the number 64, which I know is D. Now, new command, branch if not equal to uh, left. This is going to be right. So then I'm going to make a label here called left. And I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, compare to dollar number dollars 61. And BNE start. Okay, and then, oh, I don't know how to do that. Uh, well, okay, I'll do this, INX. <laughs> oh, I do, I do actually know how to do that. Uh, okay, now let me explain what I just did here. I think this is gonna, let me assemble and see what happens. Yosh, okay. All right. And then, no, do this, do display. So STA dollars, uh, C, 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 200. Ooh, X. All right, I'm gonna run this to see if it works. If it works, I'll tell you what I did. <laughs> Ah, stop. Assemble, run. Ah, stop. Display. Okay, here we Well, it kind of works. <laughs> ah, I got it. Uh, Let's see, branch is not equal to X. Okay, jump to display. All right, I don't know if this is good, good assembly language, but interesting. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to happen, but it's pretty cool. Um, what I'm trying to do is move a little pixel left and right on the screen. Um, so let me think this through. Okay, LDA. Ah.
Okay, I think this is gonna work. I, I know I'm not explaining it right now, but I will once I get it sorted. Um, hmm. Okay, well, let me try and explain what I'm doing here. Um, so I've loaded it into X1. So I want the dot to start here. Um, ah, okay. Uh, LDA number dollar zero one. All right, so let's try it again. Yeah, no, nothing's happening. I'll run. I'm gonna stop. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to find out what key's being pressed. Okay, so I'm comparing it to 64, and that's D. So if it's not D, so branch if not equal to left, it comes down here. Now, if it is D, I increment X, and then I jump to display. Ah, and STA in dollars FF. I think that's where the problem is. Um, yeah. Well, kind of works. <laughs> Stop there. I'm not sure why, but uh, all right. So let's uh, we'll call it, let's chalk this up to a win. Um, okay. Yeah, I know what I'm trying to do. It's just it's just a little harder than I thought. Anyway, let's 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 get rid of left. Let's just do right. Um, and if that works. Display. Okay, so we're gonna do. I'm gonna put left back in there. Okay, assemble and run. So it kind of works. X. Okay, stop. Ah, okay. Um, X. It's probably, it's possibly, um, well, we'll see. Yeah, this is, like I said, well, like I said, this is live coding, right? Um, yeah, there we go. That was the problem. Okay. Now, um, okay. L. What was it? Dollar two hundred comma X and INX. All right, I think that's it. Run. Okay. So I'm able to move this. Let's see what happens. It gets to the end. Probably will wrap around. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's what I expected. Okay. So let me explain what happened. <laughs> Okay, so I started out at one. I should, I should just make that zero, I think. Um, and then start, I started the program and then write. So this loads the value that's in memory location FF, which contains the ASCII code of the last key pressed. Not the current key pressed, but the last key pressed. So if, if I pressed it five minutes ago, it will still remember that. I compare that to 64. Dollar sixty-four. This is this is hexadecimal. If it's not equal to sixty-four, I want to skip all this stuff. So I'm going to jump down to left. So it says branch if not equal. So if sixty-four is not equal to the value that's in memory location FF, I'm going to jump down there. Now if it does equal sixty-four, it means I push the D key. That's lowercase D. I load the accumulator with a zero, zero, and I store that in the current spot. That basically erases the dot that's there because the background's black. That's why I chose zero there. And here's the other thing that I had to do. I also put zero in back into FF, okay? Because if I don't do that, FF, as soon as I hit D, it's always gonna be FF. And I, I don't want it to be, do that way. We, we could leave it that way, I guess, but uh, I'm not gonna do it that way. So then we increment X 
because I want to go right. So we add one to the X and then we jump down to the display. Okay, now I'm going to try and do the same thing. I'm just going to copy this, um, make this left. And then the display is just the exact same thing we did in the previous program where we load the accumulator with one, which is white, and then we store that at the offset of that particular thing. Now, um, so FF, I gotta compare it to 6.1 is A, branch if not equal to display, and then load A, and then this is gonna be the same, but instead of incrementing X, we're gonna decrement, which means minus one. I think that'll work. Run, and oops. DDD, AAA, DDD, AAA. So I can now move something on the screen. Okay, now, again, I'm, I'm skipping a couple things because I'm not quite sure how to do up and down. And I, it's kind of, I'm not 100% sure how to, I mean, I guess I know how to cross the boundaries, but it's a little bit complicated, so I want to skip that for now. Um, but anyway, that was a super quick, super uh, simple introduction to 6502 assembly language. I'll put a link down to this code uh, down below into my GitHub. And uh, yeah, just to, so just a kind of quick review. Um, LDX, we have LDA, LDX, and LDY, and we can load numbers or from zero to 255 or the value of a memory location into those registers. We can create labels. Um, they're just there for humans. And then when we use jump or branch branching commands and then we load the accumulator with the value at that particular memory location again now if i'd put a number it would actually load ff into a but in this case it is the value in ff and again ff comes from the fact that this particular simulated system puts the ascii code in here now if it was the commodore 64 it would be a different memory location if it was an Atari, it would be a different memory location. Now they didn't have, well, Atari didn't have keyboards, but you get the idea. Um, same thing would work with joysticks. Then you compare it. So compare the accumulator. And there, there is a, I think there's a CPX, which is compare X. I think there's a CPY, which is compare Y. But CMP is compare this value to the value that's in the accumulator. Now, if it's not equal, we want to jump down to the left. We don't want to do this. Okay. Now there is another one called BEQ, oops, BEQ, which is branch if equal, but we're using branch if not equal. Skip down to this. But if it is a D, load the accumulator with zero, store it here, and that, that will erase this the previous pixel. Um, store the zero also in FF to erase the key, the key press, and then increment X in this case, and that will move it to the, to the right. And then display just loads the one into there. Now I could, I could use the FE thing. Um, instead of number, I could load the, the random number and do it that way. And I get to move like a little random, randomly colored block, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. So basically this is how your computer works. Um, it's, you know, when you type Python or when you type Java, you type whatever, um, well, there's probably aren't very good examples, but something like C or C++ that compiles down to actual machine code, this is what it becomes. So your computer is taking the, you know, the linkers and compilers and all that kind of stuff, take your code and they turn it into this kind of stuff. And that's what a binary program is. It's just a ton of numbers that interact with your system in a certain way. Now, if you had a Z80 processor or the new Mac processor, there's different commands. New processors have many, many more commands. They have many, many more registers. They can address larger numbers. They can address uh, not the, uh, the more memory locations. But this is a basic, you know, this is basically how your computer works. Um, again, there's a tons more uh, commands. Ooh, there's a lot on this page. Uh, just even in this old, you know, 45, 46 year old uh, assembly language has these commands, but something a modern processor would have, you know, probably hundreds. Uh, I don't actually know. And then 
Uh, but like I said, this is the 6502. So again, I will leave uh, links to all these things down below. Um, check it out. I hope you found that interesting and, and more, <laughs> hope you found it more informative than uh, confusing. I'm going to copy this and uh, put that uh, also in my GitHub and I'll, I'll put a link down below. Again, uh, many thanks to all my members, uh, snakes and invaders and, uh, you know, subscribers and everybody. Uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around and uh, hearing what I have to say. Take care and keep on coding.